Good evening, I'm Micah Mater. And I'm Ben Bradley. Thanks for joining us. We begin with breaking news. Wildfires on the West Coast are burning hundreds of thousands of acres, forcing people to flee their communities as the flames close in. At least 35 people have died. In Oregon, the forests are burning at unprecedented levels. The Beachy Creek Fire is one of the most destructive in state history, scorching 200,000 miles. Now some residents are returning home for the first time in seven days. And that's where we find WGN's Mike Lowe. He's live in Marion County, Oregon tonight. Mike, tell us about conditions out there. Ben and Micah, good evening to both of you. These historic wildfires that have been raging here in the western part of the country have largely been uh, in forests and other remote areas. But here in Oregon, Marion County specifically, about 50 miles south of Portland, these fires have destroyed entire communities. There have been mass evacuations and people have spent days not knowing if their homes have been destroyed or spared. We haven't seen the sun since this all started. This is the first time that I've seen it out and it looks like the moon. In some ways, the sky above Marion County is a metaphor for just how upside down everything seems to be right now. Yeah, how backwards things are, but it's also a sign that it's clearing, the smoke's clearing at least a little bit because <laughs> You can see it. For Darren Andall McKinsey, today offered a sliver of hope as she returned to her home in Mill City for the first time in almost a week, just briefly to check on the property and the pets. Chaos and devastation, sadness, depression. Elsewhere, on Ferry Road in Mahama, Lyons residents waited at checkpoints to be cleared to return home. Just there, um, stopping people and they check your ID to make sure that you do live in Lyons or whatever, or they'll turn you around. Chris Jones says he's lucky. He owns an auto body shop and a home in Lyons. Both were spared by the fires. It's pretty crazy. My wife's at our house and it's pretty stressful. And, but you know, we know it's not burning, but still. It well, I'm trying to go up to my property down the North Fork Road. Uh, fire came down there pretty hot, burnt everything in its path. In the long line of cars were Dennis and Judy Sogstad. Well, we got, need to get home and get our heart medication. We had to bail out so quick uh, Tuesday morning we didn't get all our medication. Many told us that not having access to medication is one of the most stressful aspects of the situation. I'm just trying to get to the house and everything to check on it and get uh, medication and everything from a wife. Adding to the stress, though, is the knowledge that in returning home, they're seeing something unfamiliar. This was Jean's meat market. We used to get our meat from here. And like the dense smoke lingering all over rural Oregon, there is a feeling of helplessness weighing on them too. It's devastating. <laughs> it's really, really sad. Sad and scary, many people tell us tonight, specifically talking about the air quality and the pollution levels that have been measured. The international body that measures air pollution around the world has called the area around Portland and in this area of Oregon, rural Oregon, where we are tonight, as having the worst air pollution in the entire world. Reporting live tonight in rural Oregon outside of Portland, Mike Lowe, WGN News. Heartbreaking images. Mike, thank you.